A large reptile, an ancient large reptile that lived 170 million years ago has been named and given to a museum. It's legit now. Uh, it is somewhat resembling a dolphin crossed with a crocodile. Let's take a look. So this is Jarkvara Shawcrossi. It's named after Brian Shawcross, who recovered the fossils from the island's um, Bear Rig Bay. Please forgive me, Scottish speakers. <laughs> And now it is, has been given over to scientists to look over in a museum. I mean, that is just one of the most amazing looking things. It, it belongs on like the sci-fi channel, but it's a real, it's the real deal. That guy used to be oh, roaming right. around in there. Sharktopus or whatever. Yes. I don't even right? know. It's like dolphin of dial. Dolphin of dial. <laughs> Get on it, sci-fi. Absolutely. So what I found interesting about this story is that this had this fossil of this uh, giant creature had been found in 1959, and it's just taken until now for it to be named, to put out in a museum. What, what, what happened in that time gap? Science takes a long time. All of these new species that we hear, the average shelf life of one of these specimens is 21 years, and that's for things that exist. So. Anytime you hear about maybe a new beetle being discovered, something like that, on average, 21 years, it's sat in a museum until scientists can finally get to it. There's a huge backlog of work to be done on naming these things. What really stood out with this was that it was an amateur that found this. Mm -hmm. I just love that. This somebody who just had a passion for it, discovered this thing, donated it to the museum, and now it's named after him. This very cool-looking creature. It's uniquely Scottish. Uh, the, the researchers at the University of Edinburgh have said, I practice saying that. Nailed it. Because last time I said Edinburgh and people got mad. Um, but what I saw, I found an interesting quote in this, which was, we're glad that uh, Brian Shawcross gave us the fossil to study and that it hadn't languished in a private collection. Is that something that often happens? It can. Um, certainly with um, old fossils like this, dinosaur fossils, ichthyosaur fossils, um, you know, private collectors like to keep these things for display. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that means that scientists and researchers don't have access to the materials to, to do their research and to understand more about our world. And even when they do get access to it, they don't always have the ability to use it for their scientific paper because a museum will document it very clearly. They know exactly where it came from. Private collector, not always the case. So they could have this amazing looking bone and say, oh, it's from this area probably. But if they're not certain, you can't publish the science on it. So it could just be a waste of an amazing discovery. Is that a big problem in the scientific community? I know for dinosaurs here in the U.S., it can be yeah, quite can a big be. problem with dinosaur bones, where these collectors, they just like having them. I mean, I, I get it. It's a cool thing to be able to say you have a T-Rex bone in your living room, but give it to the scientists. Yeah, I mean, when, when researchers, you know, take a, take a bone out of the ground, they're, they're recording a lot, a lot of information, uh, what kinds of rocks were nearby, what kinds of other fossils were nearby, how it was laid out in the soil or in the rock, um, all things that um, a collector um, or someone who's digging up fossils to sell uh, in the private market may not be looking for. Mm -hmm. And this isn't actually a very rare fossil. Uh, they say that it in inhabited the waters uh, during the Jurassic period around Scotland and it was warm. Why is it so rare? Is, it, is that something difficult to recovery, uh, recover? To be clear, this is not a dinosaur. It is a marine reptile who happened to live alongside um, the dinosaurs. You know dinosaurs. Right. Um, probably ate some dinosaurs as they died and fell to the bottom of the sea. Um, but especially for uh, marine animals, um, it's easy for them to uh, sort of decompose at the bottom of the ocean um, and get eaten up by other critters. And uh, unless their bones are preserved, uh, then, we, then they completely vanish from the face of the earth. So we're referring to this article from Telegraph uh, the, from the UK. And the headline of it does say, was this Nessie's ancestor? No. Guys, was it? <laughs> no, it <What>? was not. <laughs> Nessie is made up. Is Nessie? it possible someone found the bones of this ancient reptile and was like, I'm going to create a whole world around this? I think that is just a classic PR department move mm -hmm. where everybody grabbed onto that, like, oh, we could compare it to Nessie. And then, you know, you get a lot more eyes on it, a lot more clicks. Nobody really... None of the articles I read really took Nessie seriously in it. I think they were just kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing, for a which is a article. good move. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a clicky headline, yeah. but um, uh, you know Nessie was probably created because um, someone saw a big a big whale or a big fish or something. And you know what really drew me to this place was the fact that the scientist said you can go there and discover fossils yourself, mm -hmm. and they will name it after you. And then he also said that they have amazing whiskey. So he basically said, come for the dinosaurs, stay for the whiskey in Scotland, and 
have a good time. There's so, no reason not to go. Right? Let's, let's go, guys. <laughs> Going to the Isle of Skye. It's got an amazing name, too. It, it really does. So, audience, when are you planning your next trip to the Isle of Skye for whiskey and marine amphib... Reptile. Re reptiles. Reptile. Oh, and not dinosaurs. Uh, it, it's really interesting to think about, like, the fossil discovery and the process that it goes through. Let us know what you think of that below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe.